Hey everybody, welcome back to Red Road Paranormal. My name is Christina Bloom. I am your co-host. I am a professional psychic, a member of the Adirondack Park Paranormal Society, and a descendant descendant of Alaskan natives. And with that, I will pass it over to my co-host Rez. Hey everybody, favorite Reznak here. A uh, member of Critters and Anomalies in the Paranormal Society, along with an enrolled member of Stockbridge Monkey Tribe, Band of Mohicans. I'm a crypto investigator and a paranormal investigator, ordained minister, and certified psychic medium. So today we have Miss Nicole Tito. Tell us about yourself, Nicole. Hi, everybody. I am Nicole Tito. I am born and raised on the south side of Chicago. Um, so at a young age, I really just lived in Chicago growing up. A lot of the haunted stories. I was always drawn to paranormal and ghostly tales. So gosh, through the years, I have just started, you know, working with different teams and learning all different methods with paranormal investigations. And from there, I got, it's been about 20 years and I have really gravitated to a lot of like the auditory uh, techniques. So done a lot of EVP sessions and more recently Estes method sessions. And I just love all things paranormal. I love the history of places and I hope I can continue to keep doing that and write about some of my experiences because it's just it's just something that it's just a passion. I say project manager by day, paranormal investigator by night. <laughs> if I could do it full time and pay the bills, I would. But <laughs> I second that. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you have a book that you have recently released. Yes, uh, back in September. Yep, I have my little author's proof. Um, it's called Estes Method and EVPs: The Search for Ghostly Voices. Um, basically, it's about ten years in the making. So a lot of the material I wrote, some of it ten years ago, regarding electronic voice phenomena, and then I pulled just a lot of techniques I learned being a part of Dale Kazmierich's group, Ghost Research Society. And then I combined it with a lot what I'm doing now with Estes Method. So it kind of goes through some tips, techniques, things that we've captured. And surprisingly, we've been able to do Estes Method remotely, where we've had one individual at the haunted location and others of us at home and had successful results. So I really wanted to get kind of my tips and techniques out there. I love getting feedback from others and like learning about what other people are doing because and paranormal, I feel like there's, I don't want to say there's no wrong way, but there's so many different varieties of how to do things. And we should learn from each other and tweak things and share our evidence and, and things like that. Um, so I just really wanted to get that that book out there. And I completely agree. Think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, too much yeah. infighting going on. We need to just start learning from each other again. And speaking of learning from each other, can you tell us exactly what the Estes method is? Oh, sure. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's a newer form in, of technique in terms of ghost hunting, but when you break it down, it's a form of sensory deprivation. So typically you have an operator and a receiver and the operator is the individual that is, is running the session. So the operator will ask questions, kind of get a feel for the environment, see what's going on. The receiver is the one that's wearing the headphones and they're typically connected to some sort of white noise generator. Um, I use a spirit box. Um, some people use their old school Radio Shack hacks. Whatever you could use to make that white noise scanning type of, of sound. And that receiver yep, is listening to anything that comes through their device. They cannot hear anybody in the environment. They cannot hear the operator asking questions. They are focused on this. And typically we say they should be blindfolded. Um, I think you're biased if you have your eyes open, because if I see my team, you know, going over by cell number seven, I'm going to be like, what's going on by (laughs) cell number seven? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And you just say what comes through. Um, You know, I try to make note if it's like a female or male, Um, if it shouts or whispers, I'll say it in that, in that tone. So if I keep getting like male voices, I'll be like, you know, male voices, male voices, male voices, just so the operator has some context with it. It's sometimes you get results. Sometimes you get nothing. Well, I think that's true of all paranormal investigating. 
Yeah. And, I, and I know, as we were talking prior, and he says he's done it for 45 minutes straight. I, I, I think the longest I ever could tolerate was 15 minutes, and that was difficult just because of that noise. And it's draining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you feel the spirits move around you. You go from knowing that there's only a few of you in a room to literally feeling like you're being surrounded by tens, 20 of people at a time. Depends on how active the location is. Now, were you, ever, from... were you ever attacked? Or did nope. you ever have to pull yourself out doing it? Okay. Nope. Never I've had an issue. I've, I've only done it a been... few times. Mm hmm now, my paranormal partner in crime, I call her Lisa Crick. We've done a lot of the sessions together. Um, she's a sensitive, though. I am not. She has a tendency to be affected where we have to pull her out. Um, there's been times where, I mean, she physically almost started crying. And I don't mean to laugh. I'm listening to the audio because I was under with, you know, I was under with her. And my husband's like, should we pull her out? She's crying. I'm like, you should have pulled her out. The thing. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> That's where a good team leader comes in into play mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. knowing your team's limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So now uh, I did pick something up out of your book. Uh, you mentioned your paranormal flow. <laughs> I I'm intrigued now. What exactly is your paranormal flow? Can you explain That's that to me? That's a good question. Yeah. yeah, that is good. I do use <laughs> I do use flow in my in my project management life too. So I mean, and I translated over to paranormal as well. So flow for me stands for, you know, focus, listen, you got to organize and kind of operationalize and then you work. So for me, I say, you know, when you go into an investigation, I think this is the project manager in me, you know, I try to focus what's at hand, kind of always be respectful of the location our team does not taunt i nor do i believe in that i don't like provoking spirits i want to be respectful of the place yep and the time i'm the guest there and that's the same with prisons i've been to many prisons it's just that's just not my methodology and i also think like with flow it's important who you work with um, over the years i work really well with certain people and we just click instantly and we have that trust um, so I think, you know, if you're newer and you're unsure, you might, you know, have to go to a couple of different investigations with different individuals and see who you mesh with. Like if, if I do Estes method with my husband, I don't get anything. When I do it with Lisa, we get a lot of stuff. When he does it with his, one of his good friends, they get a lot of, they get a lot of activity. So like the flow too, I also mean like, it's kind of the energy that you bring into an investigation. Um, because frankly, I think some people don't get anything because if they're rude, personally, if I was a spirit, if I could, I'd probably slap them. But I feel like a lot of entities will just leave. I mean, you're being yeah. disrespectful. I don't want to talk to you. As a psychic, yeah. I've actually seen that happen where, you there know, you know. right where there's an investigator with a K2 meter or whatever and going, just make the lights go on. If there's somebody here, just make the lights go on. And as a psychic, I'm watching the ghost on the other side of the room going, no, I don't like you. <laughs> All right. a lot has to do with energy and the vibrations that you put off if Absolutely. you're not anywhere near their level of vibration chances are they're not going to interact with you mm -hmm. it, it's just how they i they appear to to put that out there you know yeah. i've seen it where some locations you go in happy giddy and full of all piss and vinegar and you'll get evidence you go in there kind of just yeah i'm here you're not getting anything. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. One of the questions I've been asking more and more with EVPs is what do we look like or what do we look like or how do you see us? And I haven't gotten an answer yet, but I'm almost curious. Like, do they see us as energy? Do they see us like in like, you know, segments of time, like flashes or are we just sound? I don't know. It's like, yeah. so you probably have thoughts to that because it's like, how do they perceive us? And if we're bringing in like a big ball of black energy, they're going to be like, nope, thank you. I'm leaving. Right. No. Yeah. I wonder if they perceive us the way that we perceive them. And that's a little bit different for each person. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. You know, some yeah. of us see apparitions, some of us hear the voices, some of us just feel the energy. So mm -hmm. maybe it's the same on the other side. Just Very a well, thought. possibly mm -hmm. could be. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Hmm. 
Yeah, how much of us is bleeding over into their dimension? You know, just like how much of their dimension bleeds over to ours. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. It, it, yeah. This is all like really interesting questions that we bring up that not one of us has an answer to. And I, and I think that's yeah. even more interesting. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's it gives us something to, to work for mm -hmm. something to look at. It's a different view. Yeah. And that's why I think we do need to do more talking and share things and do things like we have all of our evidence up on um, our website. It's ghostly dash voices.com. And, you know, I invite people, like, if you can debunk something, go ahead. But I try to take pride in what I put up there. Like, I can't explain this. Um, and most of what I get is auditory, but that's what I focus most of my efforts mm -hmm. on. Um, I never was really into reviewing hours of footage. I have a lot of footage to still <laughs> review. But, Me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping Same that story. Yeah. I'm hoping that AI comes out with some sort of, and I've heard there is like detector where it'll detect movement. I'm like, maybe I can upload all my footage <laughs> and maybe it'll detect if something moves. I don't know. <sighs> I just don't have the time. <laughs> but with audio, I, I do make the time because I, mm -hmm. I enjoy listening back, you know, to the replay of what happened. Yep. Yeah, when I listen back to my audio files and all that, it takes me right back into the investigation. And it's like you remember every second that that's going on. And I think that's cool because then sometimes you think about it, you catch things that you wouldn't have caught normally. You know, I think it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and then with Estes, if you're under, you know, you're not hearing anything besides what's coming through your device. You missed out like on you know, 80% of what was going on because you didn't know what they were asking. You didn't know what was going on in the environment. So I always think it's funny when I hear the reactions of other people regarding what I'm saying or what was happening. I'm like, oh, we were really getting some good, you know, conversation back and forth. That's really interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yep. I just recorded a different show with somebody where we were talking about time slips and the communication between dimensions and how that works and you know both visual and audio and yeah I, I just I find the whole thing really fascinating and definitely when we're talking to spirits in a different time frame you know <clears throat> do yeah do they see us as spirits what how does that conversation progress you know it's always interesting mm -hmm. and and I I really like that people are starting to ask more intelligent questions during investigations <laughs> yeah. Not the, not yeah. The what's, not, what's, go, ahead. go ahead, Rez. Yeah. So not the standard, you know, who are you? What are you? You know, they're yeah. actually trying to have a conversation. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a, a really good thing there because, you know, if you go on there, they've already heard the stories. They've already heard the million and one questions of who are you, where you're from. Go in their respect and try to have a legitimate conversation. They're probably going to be more apt to communicate with you then. Yeah, I also like what I've been seeing with with some paranormal investigators, where they're they're sharing a piece of themselves before asking for information. Mm -hmm. You know, that does make it a more human like conversation. And you know, I'm I'm not just here to prove you exist i'm here to have a conversation learn about you to you know share some parts of myself with you just like we would right now mm -hmm. no know, that's have... a good point we typically introduce ourselves we just say mostly our names but that's a good point i should try to make a connection with the location or give a little bit more of my background because that is i mean i'm in their realm i should be respectful of it so that's a good point yeah, I was I was watching that on I don't remember what show it was, but I was watching that recently on something where the investigators were really just sharing a piece of themselves and I, I just they got some great results. And I, I just think that maybe, you know, if more of us were doing that, we would have more good results to share. And <clears throat> I haven't been on it well, the last investigation I went on, I went with Rez. <laughs> but <clears throat> um I haven't been on a lot recently. I'm losing my voice again. Sorry. <clears throat> but yeah, when, when I go again, I'm definitely going to be doing more of that, mm -hmm. you know, actual conversation rather than just trying to get information. Now, do you feel like on the investigations you've both been on, 
do you feel like you mean obviously we know some of the well-known places the waverly's the mansfields and things like that do you feel like they could be over investigated and that the energy could drain or shift because i personally sometimes i think that happens whether it's a small or big location that you know it's been done over and over again that i don't say there's nothing left it's just different than the first time i went there when it wasn't well known yes yeah most places i've been to have been the uh, unknown places so um couple of them have had tours run through them and I, I think the energy shifts like you're saying you know depends on who's been through there what's been done and i've gone even like spots in the woods that we've gone out for investigation for cryptids you walk in the woods and right away i pick up on the energy because i'm sensitive to that and it's like you walk in it's a completely different place Mm -hmm. and, you know, and this could be only a month or two apart from when you've been there last. So I, I think with the bigger locations, there has something to do with it. And I also believe that we leave part of our energy behind when we go to these locations. Mm -hmm. So everyone's energy is mingling together yeah. for with, with what's there. Right. And that, that happens. I mean, we, we leave our energy behind everywhere we go. I mean, we're energy fields. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that that's why places where people go a lot, where there's anxiety, like schools. Schools always have a creepy energy to them, even if mm. nothing officially yeah. bad ever happened there. But if you've ever been in a school, you know that bad things happen all the time. They're just not documented. You know, they're mm -hmm. like there's bullying and there's fighting and there's snarky remarks and 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 all of that energy gets left behind and that leaves an uncomfortable feeling in the building over time hmm. so we we leave our energy everywhere we go it's not just the haunted locations you know energy yeah, is my everywhere's thing <laughs> everywhere's haunted come on now yeah i know everywhere is haunted i don't think there's anywhere on this planet that hasn't got hmm. some residual energy and I know something I always kind of, this is just my belief and a lot of people argue with me and that's fine. That's what's good. I think sometimes graveyards and cemeteries are overrated as oh, yeah. being like haunted. I to agree. me, they're peaceful yeah. because I yep. feel like, a, okay, so you guys, I feel like a lot of the, you know, for me, I've always found theater is very, like a lot of energy, like we, when we investigated like the Lincoln Theater and Decatur, um, just because of, you think about the energy before the show and during shows and things like that. But personally, like, I think graveyards are overrated. Um, they're I agree. really, really cool places. And I, I love going yeah. to see the, the different tombstones and things like that, especially of older ones. But yeah, I, I think they're yeah, more peaceful, I, than, <laughs> peaceful than scary or haunted. Yeah. I I've agree. always felt peaceful in the cemeteries. Um, even as a kid, when I was down in Romeoville, I used to cut across the cemetery almost every night because I lived on one side of town. All my friends were on the other. So middle of the night, cutting through the cemetery to get home and never thought it was scary, never had an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, but I also have a theory on uh, cemeteries nowadays. I'm sorry, when I die, I'm not going to be hanging around in this, this rotting meat suit of mine. <laughs> and I don't think anybody else is really. So what are we picking up when we're doing these cemetery investigations? I'm thinking you're picking up on residual energy and then the sadness of all those that have come to see your final resting spot is, you know, their energies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to mention the shenanigans that go on in a lot of cemeteries. Yeah. You know, we pick up on that energy too, I think. But um, yeah, I, I mean, if I think about, not that I hang out in cemeteries all the time, but all the cemeteries I've been to throughout my lifetime, there is only one and only one spot in that one cemetery that I felt anything that gave me the heebie-jeebies or the creeps or however you want to put it. I, I've, I've rarely felt anything but peace in a cemetery or a graveyard because, like you said, <laughs> I'm not going to hang out there. Right. No. I'll go do something know. fun. Why hang out there? Right. <laughs> Look over your loved ones. Mm -hmm. You know, mess with other paranormal investigators. That, mm -hmm. That's how I'm looking forward to that one. Trust me, I'm gonna be that that you know that wise ass that's gonna come in there and totally mess with you during your investigation. 
I, I, I know a wise ass that does that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Messes a lot. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Cemeteries aren't creepy to me. They're peaceful. So. I'm trying to think some of the creepiest places that I've been to. Well, good. You, you just answered my next question I had oh. for you. <laughs> <laughs> She's on the ball today. I get, yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just connecting with you guys. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like, I will say, hmm, I've always found Crown Point Jail to be creepy in in Indiana. I don't know. I've been there so many times. It's you know, it's so close. It's only like an hour away, and and it's not in the middle of nowhere for people that know the location it's right in the middle of downtown but i just don't know it always gave a really creepy vibe to me i'll never walk around there alone and it's not huge where you know i can't get to anybody but it just there's there's one particular cell and i i forgot what floor it's on but i know we always call it like the bad man cell where all the the worst of the worst hung out and when i go in there it just seems like it gets darker because there is a lot of ambient light that comes through but that mm -hmm. you couldn't get me to go in that cell by myself, probably even during the day. It's just heavy. And, you and know what's funny? Oh, go ahead. Funny you mentioned that location. Someone was just talking about that location the other night. The other night when I was talking to them, uh, they're talking about having a paracon out there. I think it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they've so. done a lot of great things there. I mean, um, you could get in there and investigate and they've put a lot of work and found a lot of records. I feel like every time I go back, they have something new that they found or researched on. So I, I give them credit because they a lot of the volunteers really work around the clock to update that place, clean the place out. And it's just really cool location. Interesting. Cool. But, but yeah, I'd you go there. Yeah. If you go there and you go to the off, I'll send you which which cell it is, but if you run right. like a spirit box, I mean, you we got like a bunch of fus get out of there, and it really likes to attack the women. And I think one of the inmates was in there for a, a murder of, of a woman and a, and a rape. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. See, I have a theory uh, when it comes to jails and all that. You know, I was a naughty boy when I was younger, so I, I kind of have one of the little f marks by my name. And uh, I think a lot of times when these people go into these jails, they're not getting a, a lot of information or a lot of interaction because they're the normal society. I think when someone that is that can be kind of classified as one of their own would go in there and, and run these spirit boxes or try to investigate, I think they might have a little more habit of getting more information because they see them as one of their own. Because as you know, you know, as, a, as you know, those in jail, felons, criminals, whatever you want to consider them as, you don't talk to anybody. You keep your mouth shut. Snitches get stitches. But they'll talk to their own about the things they've done. That makes sense. That makes sense to me. Another place that I find to be really haunted is hotels. Yeah. <laughs> No, a lot no. of residual energy in hotels, but like even um, hotels you wouldn't expect to be haunted. You know, your your average brand name hotel, I see shadow spirits. I see people walking around other people don't see. I, You know, it's like I can hear things like I hear voices that other people don't hear. Um, yeah, I think hotels have a lot, especially hotels that have been around a while or have been built on top of land that has had issues before yep, yeah i agree with that think about how many people go to hotels to do shady things how many people you know go to hotels because they want to pass away and they don't want their loved ones to find them you know or even you know od how many people od in hotels people don't think about that they think you know oh it's just a hotel well when you start looking at the logistics of everything, of the things that happen to them on a normal basis, a perfect explanation would be that they all be pretty much haunted. Yeah, and I travel a lot, so I spend a lot of time in hotels, and so I think I notice it a lot. I, the first thing I do when I go when I check into a hotel before I even bring anything in, I go right to the room, and I clear the energy out of it. 
and reset the energy the way I want it. Otherwise, I'm up all night. I'm up all night hearing voices. I got people in my face. I'm it, Yeah, I just, I cleared out. <laughs> I'm there to sleep. Leave me alone. <laughs> it's funny you say that I had a work trip two years ago in May, and it was in New Orleans. Really cool spot it was it was a converted i forgot the name of the actual hotel it was a brand name hotel now but it was in a converted it used to be like a steamboat factory okay and, um i went on like a ghost tour that evening and came back and sure enough three in the morning my audio recorder had turned on just <laughs> randomly i was like really come on i'm trying to sleep i got a <laughs> work thing tomorrow but and it was funny i was telling my colleagues which couple of them like it most of them i have like one girl who really enjoys it most of them are like you're crazy she was like oh my gosh it followed you from the cemetery and like might have just been residual because this used to be i mean it was a steamboat factory i mean there was death yeah. and energy mm -hmm. and you're right along the mississippi river i mean there's just a lot going on so the flow oh, of yeah. water and it's it's new orleans i mean it's just energy in itself <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> so but yeah, I mean, a lot of hotels you probably don't realize. Yeah, you're sleeping next to. <laughs> right. See, people like me are like, ah, but I don't really sense it. Although I feel like the longer I do this, the more like when I go into like a location, like you get the kind of the heebie-jeebies, and you pick up on certain mm -hmm. areas where you're like, ooh, this just doesn't feel right. It feels heavy, or my hairs are standing up. So. I, I think little, that's a little bit of my sense of normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's normal, natural, uh, you know, abilities coming out because you've been doing it for so long. It just, they start to heighten automatically without us noticing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Whereas, did you say your creepiest location? Do you have one? Middle um, of the woods? <laughs> that would freak me out. The city girl, like, no. <laughs> well, I was born and raised in the city, but I'm more natural out in the woods. Be honest mm -hmm. with you, I love being in the woods. Um, I really don't have a real creepy location that's driven me nuts or really kind of got me off off kilter. I live by the no fear, you know thing. So I'm waiting for my oh shit moment. I, I I've been waiting for so long just to have one of them locations just totally blow my mind where I got to walk out and reset and go, what the hell just happened? Or what the heck did I just see? Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for that. And I'm sure it's going to happen one of these days. And when it does, it's going to be a doozy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, I actually have one. I have a location. Um, it's, uh, I'm, I can't remember the name of the place now, but the, the book about it is called Starvation Heights. It's a true crime book. Um, and it was in Western Washington and it's, it's a site of a mass murder. So, uh, my group went in to, they actually did two investigations. I was in the second investigation, but we were going in there to kind of clear the land before they knocked down the old sanatorium where a bunch of people were murdered. And, um, yeah, I, I had one come, actually, it was the murderer, <laughs> the psycho murderer came right up like in my face and screamed. And um, it made me really sick, actually, I got a really, I was down sick for three months afterwards. With that, oh, wow. with that, but yeah, it startled me. It startled me a lot. Yeah. So what'd you do in the moment? Did you have to immediately remove yourself? No, I just talked back to her and said, well, the gate's open. Go ahead and go on through. <laughs> and she <laughs> had no interest in doing that. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a really creepy place. There were cages in the basement that they kept people in. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. I feel, speaking of cages, speaking of cages, um, <laughs> yeah. a little <laughs> A location that I wish you could get into because it's not too far from from us. Have you ever heard of Owen County Poorhouse? It's in Indiana. Mm -mm. So they used to it had cages outside for really? un, for unruly individuals, and you know, there's always mm. like reports, like you know, all the myths, like they stuck people, but they it's the way that they're built. They were definitely made for 
humans. They're not animal cages by any means, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't be shocked. Supposedly they would put people outside there sometimes. And it was a pretty haunted location. Like we were outside and we would see the shadows like in the cages behind us and hear yelling and there was nobody on, on site because it's still kind of in an occluded, a secluded area since it was an old poor house, which it seems like a lot of those just have a lot of energy too, just because mm -hmm. if you think about the purpose of those, you know, just yeah. Like, a lot of sadness a lot of sadness yeah yeah mm -hmm. i went into a psychiatric hospital years ago like it was an abandoned old psychiatric hospital and um there was about 30 of us who piled into a couple of hands and went up there and uh it's it doesn't exist anymore like they've taken down the building now but we went in there and like you could see if you look down in the basement you could see the shackles on the walls and, and hearing voices and it it was just yeah it was crazy and and as we were leaving there were shots going over our heads the caretaker was next door and would set off shots to scare people off so <laughs> yeah that was yeah. probably my first oh shit moment i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i was 18 <laughs> yeah so now what about the opposite of the coin? Have you read one of them, you know, heartwarming, just told blissful moments that, you know, you're happy you're able to take, you're happy that you're able to be a part of that just brought complete joy, almost tears to your eyes? Hmm. Tears, not, not so much joy, but like that we help somebody. We, we did a private home investigation in Lamont and from just kind of finding the research and of what happened. Um, and unfortunately an individual died there accidentally and we kept getting all this activity around the kitchen table. We're like, what is this with the kitchen table? And we know that we knew the individual that lived there, they were renting and they were telling us a lot of the story and things like that. I'm like, what is with the table? And just from like research and, just during the investigation because we were there for a couple hours and the responses that we were getting like were off the charts it had seen that this individual didn't want to move on they were connected to the kitchen table because he always sat there and um unfortunately his wife had passed away um as an accident something that he had did had done so we felt that he didn't want to move on he still was guilty and punishing himself so when we came to that realization we were almost like oh my gosh and then we were just talking to him like it's okay like you know talk to us and like do you want us to pray and um you know i i'm catholic my background um i kind of practice so we won't get into that but you know the individual wanted us to pray so we said some prayers and the air seemed to get lighter and i don't want to say that we helped him move on but i think whatever spirit was there like at least we gave them some peace of mind we weren't able to get back in there. So I don't know if it was fully resolved, but I, we felt like we helped what was ever trapped there by just talking to them, understanding, and even just praying with them. And I, I felt good. I know some of us were in tears. I was very close. Um, the sadness that that spirit had, it felt like he needed to stay trapped there, almost punishing himself for an accident. So I think that was kind of one of the most like, you know, sometimes I feel like people might go into private homes and I don't want to say dismiss them, but I always feel like you should give your all when you go to a private home because usually people are calling you for a reason and you give them yep. that respect. Mm -hmm. um, and I always feel like, as I feel like when you go into a home, really try to get to the bottom of it, whether it's paranormal or, or something that's natural because these are people living there and it's bothering them usually in a way that I we want to get to the bottom of it and help them. Help to yeah. Home and both of them um because they kind of had an understanding now what was happening and um, he moved out probably six months after the investigation but he had told us that since he was running it it, it got very quiet after we were there he's like very peaceful he's like every now and then he said he'd feel something but it was more of like hey how you doing how you doing like a pop in and out and they had kind of a mutual respect for each other understanding and he wasn't afraid anymore that's I cool. love that. Yeah, cool. I love that. And, you know, there are so many people that I've talked to over the years that have been like, you know, as long as they're not hurting anybody, 
we're happy to share our home with them. Yeah. You know, I hear that a lot. Yeah. You know, if, if this was their home and they're happy here, that's great. But, you know, they have to respect the fact that we live here too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Coexist together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very thin people, line between yeah. here and there, you know? I think people are scared, you know? we're used to this but i can understand why you would be scared and like you said if it's if it's bothering you mm -hmm. that's where you draw the line but you know hopefully yeah. and that's why i don't respect groups that try to make a mockery of private investigations at people's home and want to publicize it or they go in and they taunt and provoke i mean what are you leaving the homeowner with like you could potentially yeah just really spike the activity for what like yeah what I, I just just I for ratings yeah that's just very just for clicks or views yeah no mm -hmm. you know being part of a team that if we get called out to a residential location we're going there to help you know we're going to take yeah. do the research we're going to do everything we can on site and then we keep in contact with the individuals afterwards just to make sure they're all right mm -hmm. you know we leave an open door that you know hey if anything comes up make sure you contact us let us know Mm -hmm. you know and you got to be like that if you're going to do residentials really you know those that like you're saying come in and taunt you're just leaving junk and gook back for you know the homeowners or those that are living there you might make things worse on them when they're calling for help mm -hmm. exactly you know? yeah and even that taunting i know nowadays there's been like a shift like you were saying like how many likes or subscribers or views but like even if you don't necessarily taunt but you go in with those intentions i don't i think you're just being very disrespectful and can also just spur and spike the activity for no reason and you're not helping the homeowner so either yeah, method, I'm, I'm like come on <laughs> yep not for private especially not for private investigations I completely you, agree with yeah. you. Yeah. And if you charge, I just want to slap you. <laughs> yep. I agree. <sighs> well, you don't charge for residentials for those that are asking for help. And I've seen some of them shows that they're talking to the, the clients are talking to the group and they're like, Oh, we tried to get the church to come out. Church wants X number of dollars. Try to get this team up. They want X number of dollars. I'm going, what the hell are you? You know, why? These people are coming to you needing help, wanting your assistance, wanting, you know, some help with the situation before it escalates. And you're telling them it's about money? Get the hell out of here. You know, what we do, we don't get paid to do. We ain't getting rich being in the paranormal. <laughs> At least not yet. No. When we figure that out, <laughs> great. <laughs> What's the most interesting EVP you've ever gotten? Oh, hands down magic. So uh, it was at the Lincoln Theater. I should like I have my website pulled up on my other site. Um, Lincoln Theater in Decatur, Illinois. It was myself and two other two other women in, in the dressing room. So it's like underneath the stage, pretty secluded, just three women and um, we were sitting there asking questions. It's always been a really cool location. Lots of shadow people. Again, theater, lots of good energy. Well, I say good, just lots of energy. Um, and it was kind of like, I don't want to say like a boring session, but we weren't really feeling anything. So we're just asking questions away. And I, I mean, obviously as an EVP, I didn't know till a couple weeks later, but my friend, Nicole Strickland, she asked, what are you going to perform here tonight? And then you hear a distinct male voice say magic and it actually talks over her because she like kind of like stumbles and was like she says like like she kind of mumbles like a word after so you know it's not her it's definitely not my voice and the funny thing is um the other investigator Lisa Crick had her recorder on voice activation mode accidentally and it didn't it didn't capture that like it captured us talking but not not that voice and for years, we always thought it was Houdini. I mean, there's claims that Houdini was down there, but uh, we did a little bit more research. And actually last year, we think it was Harry Blackstone. So I found an old YouTube clip of him. 
I pieced it together to fit the magic. And I think it's pretty close. So I have that up on the website. I think it maybe was him just popping in while we were. And that's where he would be, the dressing room right next door to the stage because it led right out to the, you know, to the doors right there. And it was it was a private one. Um, but I don't know. We think it might have been Harry Blackstone, but clear as day. I mean, people will think I faked it, but I know in my heart it's a male voice. There were no males. There's three girls, and it's it's loud as day. I've I've never captured an EVP that clear um, since then, and that like amazing. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my pretty awesome. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. I know I'm a lot. It was in 2009. Are, 2009. <laughs> okay, I know a lot of EVPs are are fuzzy. You know, they're not real clear. So. Yeah. Mm. You know, and I, they do have like the EVP classification scale and things like that. I mean, I, personally, like if I hear something, I clip it and I send it to the team and say, what do you think? I am I'm even mindful of what I name it. I'll be like, you know, dressing room clip or something. So they're not biased. So, and then that's how I do the go. same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I bounce it off other people, team members and friends. And what do you think you're hearing here? And after they say what they think, then I'll tell them, well, this is what I think. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it matches up, sometimes it don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of them, it's hard to tell because it could be really just kind of, I don't know, subjective, I think, with a lot oh, of yeah. EVPs. And I've always been worried about getting new equipment. I mean, I have, I mostly use my audio recorders I've had for years and I've captured things on different devices. So I'm always like, if I get a new device, will I still get things? And I have. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've actually, one of the best clips I got came right off of my cell phone. Mm -hmm. I had uh, was using it on an investigation actually down in the Chicagoland area. And I forgot to shut it off. So you have from the investigation through the car ride, everything else. And where I was staying that night, I couldn't smoke in the house. So I'm outside in the car smoking a cigarette and I'm having like a heart to heart with the, the young ghost that the young spirit that was, I was down there to help. I'm like, you know, I'm sorry. I couldn't get any information. I really wanted to help. And then out of nowhere, you know, I get a female voice VVP. And as I'm smoking my cigarette, and I'm talking, I look down, I'm like, oh, shit, my phone's still on. So I stop it, and I back up a few minutes, and that's when I found it. Mm -hmm. I was like two hours away from the investigation time, probably about 40 miles away, you know, physically, and to get that female come through and say something. Mm -hmm. and it was a very unique experience. That's cool. I know you sent it to me to listen to, too. Yep. Yeah. As usual, I heard static, but I, other people heard things too. So, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, Todd Bates was doing a show. It was last week, a week before. He was talking about EVPs, and I sent him that clip to see what they thought he, what they heard. Oh, I heard that one then. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that was clear. Ugh, clear as day. Yeah, no, it's taking hours like, after. Did she, it was something like, something no, or can you know? I forget, but yeah. I think it said, uh, let them know I'm at peace. Them... Oh. That's what I heard. Okay. I've had a couple of people say that, and I've had other people say, um, I want to be at peace or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've gotten both sides of the coin there. I think the only thing I heard was actually the word no. When I listened to it, yeah. I think that's the only thing I actually heard was the word no. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. That's why people with hearing disabilities should not be doing EVP research. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> I know we were talking like if you use WavePad and you, mm -hmm. you know, you zoom in and you look for like, like the different dips and rises in, in, in the frequencies in the wave pattern. I mean, you might be able to amplify too. Um, I don't tweak my audio that much. I mean, I may amplify it, but that's usually all that I do. But I usually don't even do that. I don't like to change the speed. And I never listen to anything in reverse. I just, it's just. Yeah, I've never I tried to reverse. People that claim it, claim by, you know, I just don't. 
it's just not my thing, but to each its own. My Do you ever receive. reduce the background noise? Are you able to isolate the background noise? I tried like, cause I have like the wave, pa wave pad paid subscription. I got it like years ago before you had to pay per month, which I love cause it's like a one-time fee and I'm locked into that, which I like. And it has like that you could, tr I, I, I have, but sometimes I feel like I tweak it too much where it starts to sound robotic almost okay. or like mechanical. And I'm like, yeah. this is not, this is not what it originally sound like. So I'm kind of like, eh. okay. But, there's some people that are really good with that. I just don't. I like to kind of keep it as original as possible. Um, I think that's fair. Yeah. 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 yeah keep it raw. Now, I will say something interesting. I've just started trying because I, I use artificial intelligence for my work. Um, I said, I wonder if it can detect evps that i've gotten so i started uploading a couple of my clips for like those voice um translation ai it has picked up some of them and it hasn't picked up others so like my magic my magic one i, I have to go back and see super loud i mean the mad like i don't know if it picked that one up but then other ones that were quieter whispers it picked up so hmm. I, again i don't know if there's no rhyme or reason but i'm like this is kind of interesting like the software is detecting a voice in some and not others, but I'm not smart enough to know why there would be those differences. <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> but I don't know. Well, if we had recorded last week, like we had in intended to, you would have been hearing me as an EVP because I literally had no voice. It would have oh, just shit. been whispers. It would have been like, <laughs> okay, so tell me about this. <clears throat> I, I told you we should have ran with it. The creepy factor. <laughs> I the microphone the... that sounds really good like the quality so I mean... <laughs> maybe we should have i don't know but without a voice i was like eh, we should probably reschedule this because <laughs> isn't, yeah. whis isn't whispering worse when you don't have a voice yeah i've always heard that i don't know if that's true it it, it was painful to whisper mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you know laryngitis is not good for broadcasters <laughs> nope <laughs> And yet it happens. All right. So where can where can people get your book? It is available on Amazon worldwide. <laughs> like it's the, no, but it is available on Amazon. Or if you'd like a signed copy, you could go to ghostly-voices.com and I'll ship it to you signed and personalized. Um, but yeah, Amazon, Estes Method and EVPs. EVPs. Awesome. <laughs> signed copy. <laughs> Spoil. Uh, That's yeah, awesome. Let, yeah, let me know what you think. Like, I love feedback. I mean, you could tell me. And yeah. I like, like, let's get everybody talking and chatting and like throw ideas off each other. Like, come on, paranormal community. Like, right. like it's it's been stagnant for a while. I feel like we need to pump up the energy. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, so <clears throat> with wanting to communicate and all that, I take it you're willing to. Uh, collaborate with other investigators and teams in the future oh, yeah yeah definitely and i'm just outside chicago and we run a group we call ourselves the american spectral society ass for sure <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is yeah that is pur yeah that is purposeful um but yeah i mean we're just kind of a loose group of friends who've been doing it anywhere from a couple years to like i think our expert and i hate calling them an expert i just do that to make to make fun of them but like uh, jim gracek he's been doing it gosh almost probably close to how long I've been alive, but I'm not going to say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so yeah, we always love to collaborate or if questions or if people aren't even sure if they want to get into it. I say, you know, like you, it's not for everybody, but if you ever want to come hang out, try it, come on, join us. Yeah. And don't nice. go, yeah. Don't go out and buy hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of equipment. You don't need that. You really don't. No. Yeah. I, I'm a I'm a big one to promote the the join a team or find a team to to try it out. Those that are more experienced than any than you are, just to get your feet wet and see if it's literally something that you know you're really interested to. Considering yeah. we all know it's not like the shows. Oh, you know, not. you're there all night long. It can be very boring, very monotonous. Where the shows they show you ten minutes, they got all this great information. Twenty minutes later, we're we're almost done. You know. No, mm -hmm. I, I know. 
No, yeah, we don't no. charge any sort of fee. Um, you know, we just ask that you follow. You know, we don't really have like a set of rules, but again, like we don't provoke and things like that. We don't trespass. So obviously if you did that, we would not want you to go with us. Right. <laughs> right. And, and in yeah. addition to trying, like going out with, with different paranormal investigators, have conversations, make sure your values are in line with the people you're going out with before you yep. ever go out on an investigation. I think that's so important. Mm-hmm. People just don't stop and think about that ahead of time. It's like, oh, well, everything is like it is on TV or all paranormal investigators are the same. And that is just not true. No, no. It's yeah, just especially like, true. you know, sometimes we'll go out and we'll have like a quiet time where like I'm going to hit, you know, I'm going to do 20 minutes of an EVP and everyone's got to be quiet because, you know, like if you're trying to capture a, a real EVP and doing a session, it's got to be quiet as possible. So, right. Um, you know, having people scooting front. around and switching their positions and scratching on the floor with their <laughs> shoes. Yeah. That all messes up EVPs. I don't think mm-hmm. people think about that if they're not, no, if this isn't something they normally do. Yeah. I mean, as this method, you could kind of be a little bit louder because you're not focusing on getting, you might get an EVP, but it's going to, you're not focusing on that. You're trying to focus what's coming through the devices. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. To each its own. But that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. yeah. See who you find your flow. Who do you mesh yeah. with? No, yeah. serious. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. You know, I, I've been friends with my team for years prior to me joining the team. You know, we worked together in other projects, you know, throughout the years. Heck, me and my team leader even actually worked at the same company for a while, you know, for a day job. So we knew each other in and out for the most part. So when it came for me to join a team, it was a no brainer. I knew I had someone I could trust and someone I actually enjoyed spending time with because you, you have to enjoy your team. Cause otherwise it makes it pretty rough on an investigation <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Both sides of the line. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Nicole, I want to thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your book. Uh, that has definitely gone on my list of books that I'm going to be getting. So, um, but thank you so much for coming, for sharing about EVPs and how to listen to them and all of that. And Rez, thank you for sharing your, your experiences as well, because I know you hear things I don't hear. <laughs> yeah. So. That's and really you awesome. see things that I don't. So that makes it great. <laughs> it works really well together. Yeah, it, it does. So again, thank you everybody. Uh, Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, yep. share, share, share. <laughs> yes, definitely share with yeah. us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next time. Yep. Thank you. Okay.